He also boasted about how much prices have increased, which huh. is a pretty interesting boast. Uh, cut 10. But our supply chains have now improved. And prices are still too high. Yeah, huh? Yeah. yeah. Whose fault is that? Bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Right. Ground beef is up uh, almost 50%. And whose yes. fault is all of that? That's just bizarre. That's bizarre. Do, do you think that we believe you just fell out of the coconut tree? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then now, now all of a sudden you're, uh, you just came out of nowhere? No, we know you've been there the whole time overseeing this disaster. Now do you gasoline. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Now do gasoline. Now do electricity. Yeah. Now do, uh, right. now do, uh, do rent. Do now virtually do anything. Now do car insurance. Yeah. Now do all of it. Interest rates. Do, uh, I mean, it's madness I, that she would even bring that up. Well, some will say that she just made the perfect ad for Trump. Play yes. It, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. A, lo- a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. <laughs> Ground beef is up almost 50%. Uh-huh. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this <laughs> Thank message. you. What are, what are we even doing? Is that real? Or uh, did, no, did uh, we, social we media was making it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. It wasn't quite as smooth as it probably would have been otherwise if that was professionally made but that was you know that's it's, so what it's yeah. the same thing that's good that's right that's incredible <laughs> he should use her yeah. in his ad absolutely i mean that's perfect unbelievable yeah pudding uh, bread is 50 percent more than it was um so is uh so is meat Yep. Yes, up by fifty percent. I mean, the price of have you have you priced out ice cream? I bought it for my family uh, over the weekend, and we we're. I don't look at ice cream prices. People. I just buy the ice cream and move on. <laughs> I don't look at the prices. I, I haven't looked for a really long time, but because I bought it, I just checked. Uh, I happened to check the uh, the price it's when a, it came up on the it's screen. Three dollars, right? Three dollars and ninety five cents. No, it was. Oh no, eight dollars and sixty four that. cents. That's yeah. I mean, uh, you, for a I'm gallon sure of ice cream. you probably bought Bluebell. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, until you get the half gallon. It's almost $9. Yeah. It's, it's almost $9. Yeah. Dollars. yeah. I'm like, I'm glad I don't eat that stuff anymore because. Me too. Be out of house and home. Me too. I mean, too. that's crazy. Seriously, though, that's nuts. Know, it's, it's, uh, that's nuts. It used to be, when I was buying it a year and a half ago, $6. Yeah. I mean, it, it's you, gone up to it, nine. It's just another example of seriously. Wow. When you walk out of the grocery store and you have two bags in your hand and it was $80. Yeah. Right. And you're like, wow. What did I buy? Um, yeah. Not much. Not yeah. much. It's outrageous. And if you go, you go, I mean, even if you go to the big box stores, you know, Sam's or Costco, because you're saving money. Uh, you know, you're not walking out of there with stuff that you need for your house for under four or five hundred dollars, right? I know, and that's just everyday survival items. Yeah. Well, I mean, you may be able to get by without a few of the items, that you <laughs> but it doesn't matter what you buy. Correct. It costs more than it did under Trump. Uh, oh my gosh! And for her to stand there and talk about that, it's just again. Weird. It's weird, but thank you for noticing gasoline. that you uh, guys like have ruined it. the economy. Like thank to pay you. A lot less for gasoline as well. Yes. I mean, I, I'm sick of feeling good when it's under three dollars a gallon. Oh, I only paid two ninety six. Oh, I know. Yeah. We've all been tricked oh, into yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got a really good price. Two eighty nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two eighty nine a gallon. We forget that under Trump, the last day of the Trump administration, it was like a dollar eighty seven. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean there were times during the during the pandemic when it was, you know, buck twenty. Oh yes. Buck fifteen <laughs> for regular gas. I mean those those days aren't coming. No, back. they are not. Uh here's so we've got Kamala with uh some of the highlights of highlights. her yep. speech over the weekend. All right, here it is. Our country has come a long way since President Biden and I took office. <laughs> That's for yes, sure. They have. A loaf of bread? Cost oh, she's going to break down this again. More now. today mm-hmm. than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef 
is up almost 50%. And whose fault is that? Why is she and using I this I don't as a talking point? I don't know. What home ownership I don't know. means. It's more than a financial transaction. It's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. It's more than a house. Right, home yeah. Home ownership and what that means... It's a symbol of the pride uh-huh. that comes with hard work. It's financial security. It represents what you will be able to do for your children. And you priced everybody out of the market? Is that what you're bragging right about? now, it is out hell? of reach. Yeah, far yes! Far too many uh, Americans. Unbelievable! There's a serious Weird. housing shortage. In mm-hmm. many places, it's too difficult to build, and it's driving prices mm. up. Wow. So now, now, Some weird now stuff. is the time to chart a new way forward. Now is the time to chart Why a haven't you new done that? way forward. Are you kidding? Who's, uh, whose what, fault what? is all of that that she just outlined? Are you blaming that on Donald Trump from four freaking years ago? Come on. You've been in office for almost four years. You can't blame that on Trump. That's You just can't. Because none of that stuff was the case under Trump. It was all better under Donald Trump than what she's talking about now. And it was a lot better. So what are you talking about? That is so weird. That is I don't understand how incomprehensible. The, how the campaign can think that that's a selling point. I don't either. How can you be standing there saying this stuff? And the people are applying. With a straight yeah. face. With a yeah. straight face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yay. You've raised our cost of living so high we can't afford to live. Thank you, Kamala. Thank yeah. you. Let's have more of that. And Four more thank years. Thank you, Joe. Inc- it's incredible. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I've ne- that's, a, that's an administration that is working against itself. It's yeah. incredible. Now, she was asked before this speech wow. she was getting off, and she was asked, they actually said, hey, uh, how are you going to pay for all of this? And she gave some, I think we have the clip. Well, I don't know what cut it is. She, uh, she gave some long-worded answer. Cut 13. Yeah, talks to reporters in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Remember I unveiled your some economic policies last week? Yeah. Can you explain how you're going to pay for those? And can you give us a sense of what other policies you want to unveil going forward? Sure. Well, I mean, you just look at it in terms of what we are talking about, for example, around children and the child tax credit and extending the EITC. That is it's at $6,000 for the first year of a child's life. The return on that investment in terms of what that will do and what it will pay for will be tremendous. We've seen it when we did it in the first year of our administration. We reduced, we reduced child poverty by over 50%. So that's a lot of the work. And then what we're doing in terms of the tax credits, yeah. we know that there's a great return on that investment. And when we increase home ownership in America, what that means in terms of increasing the tax base, not to mention property tax base, what that does to fund schools, again, return on investment. I think it's a mistake for any person who talks about public policy to not critically evaluate how you measure the return on investment. When you are strengthening neighborhoods, strengthening communities, and in particular the economy of those communities, and investing in a broad-based economy, everybody benefits and it pays bad. for itself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you take out your notebook? Mm-hmm. I don't see you writing down <laughs> this math problem that she just tried to explain to you. You know, all that nonsense was not well received by the media. No. no her pissed. economic plan just w- landed with a thud. Nobody liked it. Nobody. Because it's not one. Mm. I mean, it's, it, it, I guess it is. And CNN drive the country shredded into. her entire place. Yeah. Yeah, Everything. CNN. Um, here that here is uh, CNN shredding her price control plan. Catherine, I hear I read your piece and and I heard you just mention it. The federal ban on price gouging for groceries. You are skeptical of this. Why? Well, 
first of all, no one can explain what price gouging <laughs> means. That? It's it's like that old <laughs> line to you. about pornography. <laughs> I know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that, what does it mean to have an excessive price or an excessive pro profit margin? That uh -huh. seems to be shorthand for a price or a profit margin that that bugs me. That seems too high. Uh -huh. uh, so you know, it's very hard to pin down what this would actually mean. If you look at the legislation that, as I mentioned, is already in the Senate, um, led by Senator Senate Warren uh, and Senator Bob Casey and, and a slew of others, the particular way that this is written, which is likely to be the template for any proposal that Harris would eventually um, embrace, is especially bad in that it just bans excessive prices, uh, grossly excessive prices, grossly excessive profit margins, and says that the Federal Trade Commission can use any metric it deems appropriate to decide what mm. that what that would would mean, um, which basically says like it's not going to be markets, it's not going to be supply and demand that's uh, determining how much your grocery store charges you for for milk or for eggs it's going to be some bureaucrat in dc which seems like totally unworkable first of all for mm -hmm. the ftc to be side, deciding like how much kroger charges for eggs right. in michigan um but it also mm. would be very bad for markets we've seen this kind of thing tried in lots of other countries before mm -hmm. venezuela argentina the soviet union etc it Thank leads you. to shortages it leads <laughs> to black markets um you know, mm -hmm. plenty of uncertainty. And beyond mm -hmm. that, the mm -hmm. specific way this bill is written might actually increase prices because of some of the other language in it. Um, mm -hmm. Things like requiring companies, uh, public companies to disclose mm -hmm. in their quarterly uh, reports, their mm -hmm. quarterly earnings reports, how they're setting prices, which is a great way to help them collude, <laughs> which normally we don't want them to do. So anyway, you know, the devil's in the, in the details, I guess, for that bill, but it's really hard for me to imagine oh, any form great. of legislation that uh, preserves the spirit of what she's proposing uh -huh. that would not be, uh, you know, at best do nothing, at worst cause a lot of harm. Okay, that is CNN. Yeah. That is coming from the cable news network. <laughs> That's incredible. That's not Fox. That's not the New York Post. That's not the Wall Street Journal. That is CNN saying those things and reminding people that these things were all done in places like Venezuela, the Soviet Union, the oh. Eastern Bloc countries those those are the countries that do price control oh, that's incredible <laughs> i mean that is really amazing <laughs>